as a whole for in individual speakers, then let us know. So, good morning. I'd like to thank the organizers for um, inviting me here today. It's an extremely interesting conference. Now, our platform, uh, Packaging in Society, I'm sure many of you know it, but many of you may not. So it's quite a young organization, not as young as uh, Caesar, my colleague. But we were founded in 2013. We have 45 members. As our name implies, we look at packaging and society. Um, we work alongside uh, commercial partners. We try to integrate management systems, um, but also in plant life products, in farming processes, in medication. And we also work with consumers. And we have other organizations that have uh, were incorporated recently as members. So, and we're also working on technological solutions, and we work alongside universities too. So all these different areas that we are working together with, these are the key partners, and we also work with other types of organizations, as you can see on the slide. So our platform basically aims to open a debate and to share knowledge, transfer knowledge. We work by yearly commission. Our platform commissions us to talk about a specific area, to focus on a specific area, and at the same time we also look at different areas. In 2013, we began by working on the socioeconomic aspects of packaging and recycling. We undertook a study then, 2014. We focused on the citizenship perspective, uh, the perception that people have of the pictograms on different types of domestic waste. Uh, and we also looked at uh, re waste recycling during people's holidays and consumer aspects. And we also looked at how to improve packaging in 2015. We also looked at um, the um, recycling system alongside public institutions. We worked with universities in Madrid, Alcadenares, Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, Barcelona, and the Alicante University we worked together with these universities so that we could therefore deepen knowledge on systems of recycling in Spain, and then we applied our conclusions on national level. And then 2016, we worked on a worldwide initiative on littering. So we work, we produce uh, high profile studies, and then we disseminate. We work uh, from our platform, we have the outreach programs, but we also participate in conferences and events like today's event, uh, in which we participate and are happy to do so. So we want to generate knowledge, we want to generate debate on, and we need to then transfer this knowledge to all the various different stakeholders in the process to make recycling more effective. Now we've already heard about um, recycling waste directives, European directives, and we're talking specifically about packaging here. Mm, I think it's important that we look at what packaging represents without really um, undermining the importance of working in packaging. So we need to look at packaging, household packaging first of all, here 18% on the pie chart. Technology is not always the greatest of allies, but anyway, here we go. And of this, uh, domestic packaging of this 18 percent packaging itself is only a fraction so what fraction does this represent we analyze light packaging uh, which goes in the yellow bin and glass which goes into the green bin this is approximately 21 percent of household waste which is in turn 18 percent of total waste production So, in our foundation, therefore, this we try to make people understand that this is only 4% of all waste. So, this is a, really a, a negligible amount, but at the same time, we should take this amount into consideration because in our foundation, we do look at waste recycling and uh, packaging recycling, but we must understand that within the world of recycling that it's not only about packaging, there are many other cross-cutting areas that we need to look at that also affect the system on the whole. Mm, next we look at the greenhouse gases and how they affect the environment. We need to take an overall 
approach. And we need to understand what packaging represents. It, in fact, represents 5% of the climate change mitigation attempts that have been produced by the COP21 Paris Agreement in this fight to reduce climate uh, change. So 5% is packaging, which is uh, that small part of household waste, 18% of all household waste. So just to give you a, a, a snapshot, an idea of what packaging represents. And also, the current packaging waste management model is as it is. And in fact, the public figures that are being supplied with at the moment are in fact overestimating the effects of packaging. But we must mm, have a clear perspective so that we can mitigate climate change the best way that we possibly can. Now, if we take a look at the rates of recycling in Spain, in fact, you can see that the um, graph is uh, following an upward trend, which I think is something that we should all be aware of. Anyway, I'm trying to control the time looking at my mobile phone at the moment. So I'm looking at light packaging in Spain. Obviously, my colleague will talk about glass afterwards, but in terms of recycling of light packaging, we are improving all the time. There is a, an upward growth trend, and I think that this is a trend that we need to, contrib uh, to encourage, we need to consolidate. And this is not equal in all countries. If we look at Germany, they started working this area. Uh, the directive was, is transposed in 2003. And this has not improved. In fact, it's got worse. If we look at the Netherlands, the, there has not been uh, much of an increase. Belgium has a model much similar to our own. And Belgium, in fact, is top of the league in terms of waste recycling in Europe. Joachim spoke to us about the system that's been applied there. This might help, might not. And then if we look at Spain, we can see that Spain recycling rates continue on an upward trend. So we're doing a pretty good job, even though we need to do even better. Next, let's take a look at the Canary Islands. Uh, recycling of light packaging in the Canary Islands. So our colleague was quite right that a few years ago the Canary Islands was really lagging behind in terms of package recycling. I think our colleagues are well aware of this. But since 2011, 2011 they introduced a strategy change and the household waste recycling figures shot upwards since then. In 2011 the uh, from 2011 to present date, uh, the overall rate has increased by 6.1%. That's the average, and the accumulative increase has been 18% in those four years. So we can see that it has been a great uh, improvement. Now, the Madrid U University and Las Palmas de Gran Canaria University have done a study on uh, recycling here in the Canary Islands, and they have given us conservative estimates. The, we're not going to continue with an overall 6.1% growth because of the way that the figures grow. But if we look at the Canary Islands, over the coming years, the university thinks that by 2020 or the end of 2019, that we will have a recycling rate that compares to the national level, about 75% altogether. So I think uh, we're doing a pretty good job here in the Canary Islands. Um, in the Canary Islands, we are also lagging behind in the way that we manage household waste. Uh, average growth is below the national average as well. Um, but we are on the right path. By 2020, we will be aligned with the rest of Spain. But obviously, we cannot just rest on our laurels because the challenge continues to be very complex. So we need to, therefore, be able to improve in many different areas, echo design. We need to involve uh, everybody involved in the entire chain. We need to involve managers. We need to have a rational approach and an adjusted approach to the figures that we want to achieve. And finally, we need to educate. This is a key area. We have consumer organizations, neighborhood associations, um, housewife organizations, and they, these associations are those that will help us to move forward because 
And regardless of the amount of legislation and laws that we introduce, it is those people, the grassroots representatives, that are really going to help us to improve the situation. Finally, um, with regards to waste recycling. Now, you may rem remember that Madrid University Polytechnic and Las Palmas de Gran Canaria University undertook a study and 24.7 billion euros a year, that was the net figure of uh, total investment in these recycling plans. Obviously, these were amounts earmarked as estimates for the future. So it was eventually about 24%. And there would be a 9.9, nearly a tenfold growth in the annual uh, management system expense. And obviously, this would mean a growth per family. And this means that consumers will continue to have to pay for this. And the average family cost would grow from 5.33 euros to about 52 euros, 52.57 euros, if we implement these new uh, waste recycling programs. Mm. Now, these investments will pay back in, in the future because obviously it's a huge investment but the payback if we look at how recycling will grow will be good because we hope that the rate of recycling will increase by nearly three points by 2018 so there will be a payback but these figures don't only concern the Canary Islands these figures are similar in countries like Norway for example they rolled out a plan and they have increased the rate by nearly 1.5%, which is a very good approach. And their program costs seven times the, 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 the cost of our program. So mm, it is positive. And in Germany, if they introduce a similar uh, recycling model, then they would increase their recycling rate by 2.7%, and investment would be key. So this is a scheme that we hope that we will be able to apply. It's neither good nor bad, but it depends on how well it's applied. Mm, this is a tool. It's a tool, this tool has been applied in many different countries. Will the tool work? Well, it will depend on the country. It will depend on local circumstance. There are countries like Italy, France, United Kingdom have studied this recycling plan. They have decided not to go ahead with it because it didn't apply to the characters of the country. But Nordic countries have done it because they have seen it as an ideal situation. Uh, so these deposit systems are systems that have a very high initial cost in terms of investment, but the environmental impact is extremely reduced. So these deposit systems, therefore, are progressive systems and I personally believe that it would be a very good idea for us to roll out this kind of program in Spain because the knock-on effects will be good and we will have to look at how we adjust cost and the payback in the end. It's a system, a system, a system which is neutral in itself per se, it's neither good or bad, but it's been introduced in the, in the, in the Balearic Islands, in Germany, in Holland, in different countries. It's not yet viable in the Canary Islands, I have to repeat this fact, but it is a system that I think that you should talk about and you should uh, consider. Thank you.